Hey guys, uh, welcome everybody. Today we have Mehul with us and Mehul is going to share his experience about studying bachelors in Germany. And if you have any kind of questions, and I'm pretty sure that most of you must be having some. So he's going to be there with us and you can just start shooting some questions. But if you would like to hear what the general process is, um, we can like already then start with that. But first of all, let us know from which different cities are you joining in from? Like Mehul is from Berlin right now. <laughs> uh, we are in Hamburg. Where are you from? We also had a full day. Like we went to quite a few different places. I was busy showing Mehul the city. And we had actually a quite quite a lot of stuff to do. We went to the Oreo, uh, what was this? Oreo, Oreo Fest, Fest. Yeah. yeah. And you can eat as much as you want. It was so nice. I absolutely loved it. So Gujarat, we have somebody from Gujarat too. So like Mehul is also from Gujarat. Uh, there's someone from Surat too. Huh? Uh, so you're from Surat, Mehul? Yeah, I'm from Surat. Ah, uh, Mehul is from Surat. Tashreen Munian is from Heidelberg. Hyderabad, Rohtak Haryana. Kya baat hai, bhai sahab. All right, interesting. So guys, uh, you can start now. You can start shooting your questions about bachelors. And we can start taking them afterwards. No? So Mehul, first of all, uh, let us know. OK, is first year from Open University valid if that university is recognized on Anabin? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, like first year, first year it's uh, valid. Like, for it, it doesn't matter from which university you do it, but unless and until you have passed the first year, it's completely valid with uh, everything. But you have to just be confirmed with the uni assist whether they consider it as, as a valid certificate or not. Which kind of visa should I apply for? Tune and games. It's more, of course, like you're coming for study purposes, so like you apply for student visa. But if you're coming for like off normal proofing and stuff, then it's going to be the study applicant visa. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you're coming for off normal proofing, then you'll probably end up getting the three months of uh, just the examination visa. So you have to just head back home in three months, and you are just here allowed here to just give the examination and then just go back to your home country. Mm -hmm. Vinamji is asking bachelor for diploma guys. So bachelor for diploma is kind of like complicated and you have your options limited because the degree of the bat the diploma degree from Indian colleges are not recognized by uni assist. I don't know for some reason. So that's the reason you have to apply if you're if you're planning for your bachelor's in Germany then you have to go for the universities which are not like which doesn't accept the application via uni assist. There are some universities like Degendorf and everything they can apply the free ap applications from you just have to apply on their own websites i think even klaus Thal, they must be having um uh, no klaus for... is for uni assist it okay. goes for uni assist yeah but like if you don't have any uh, of the documents for example like you're still in your 12th right yeah. so what documents do you send to uni assistant uh when i was in i actually started my process after i completed my 12th standard and i got my result mm -hmm. like whether i passed or not then I started with my language at an institute in Surat. And the documents which I sent was my pretty much my certificate and everything, like my achievements till the date, like academic achievements, and then my 12th results and the 10th standard results as well. And then my birth certificate and my passports. Those were the only things I guess needed for the bachelor's admission. OK, OK. Now, uh, Shivam Gandhi is asking bachelor in pharmacy. Do you have any idea about it? Uh, not much, but uh, it's the M course, right? Yeah, it would be the M course. So basically, it would be the same as the other students. You have to attend the student colleague, even for the pharmacy or any. But you have to opt for the M course in student colleague, and then I guess you have to like transfer the medical college, and the process is kind of similar. Mm -hmm. um, now, Devansh Kumar is asking, what is the syllabus of of number proofing in uh, matter? Cinema, syllabus for uh, off norm proofing i guess it's it's kind of like the simplest thing it's, it's really simple it's not that difficult i mean like if you have studied your 11th and 12th standard well then i guess you won't be having any problem dealing with the off norm proofing the only thing you have to be careful about is the german words so i would like um, advise you to at least uh, go through some sample papers so you know so you know how, what to do in certain type of questions so yeah i guess that's the only thing needed okay 
now we can uh, what is qu criteria for iit advanced qualified person uh yeah for the iit advanced qualified so if you are lucky and if you are one of the top like intelligent guys and you already crack the iit advanced and everything mm. so i guess then you don't have to do the studium colleague then the only worry about for you would be completing your german language and getting into a, a university because this iit advanced is really is validated by the university so you won't be having any problem uh, dealing with that Okay, so like the people who have done IIT advanced, they don't necessarily have to apply for German thought, like uh, English thought programs. They can learn German up to B2C1 yes. and they can also apply, to apply directly to the university that there is no problem. Okay. All right. So I think again, like for people who are with, uh, who are, who want to apply through IIT advanced, uh, it would also be nicer or like more interesting that you can ask the uni assist directly like what exactly documents that you have to send. I think most of the times it is going to be instead of your first year bachelor's transcript, you send your IITJ advanced um, scorecard uh, instead of yeah the first year transcript that you would be sending otherwise to the university. No? So like I think that's the main difference. Uh, Madhuri Vavre is asking, do I need transcript to apply for bachelor's? Yes, the for bachelors, you obviously need some transcript, whether it's from your diploma or your 12th standard transcripts, or even for student colleague, as you will be needing the student colleague. Mm -hmm. Gagan Sandhu is asking, show us the cat. She's so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I made a vlog with Mehul, and Jumanji has been really kind, and she has been really adorable there too. And I think like that would be up soon too. Uh, Aryan Suri is asking BBA or BSc economics from Germany. Is it worth it? Uh, obviously, I like any day of the week, I would obviously go for BBA because uh, as far as I know, like BBA and MBA have like much more bro broader scopes of uh, jobs in Germany. So after the studies, you would have really good uh, opportunities for, for jobs and internships as well. Um, Crispin Klapworth is asking, can you guys speak fluent German? Uh, fluent, I guess, yeah, I mean, like we can converse in German. Yeah. Yeah. If, like if, if Alina, if Alina would have been here, Aline, you want to come? Huh? You, you want to talk with in German with us for a while? Come on. I don't know. Ask us, ask us how, how are we doing or ask me how is he doing? Come. We, we have a, a German now, and she can definitely ask Mehul, and we can talk. All right, Mehul. Yeah, so, Hello, guten Tag. Guten Tag. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what kind of uh, questions did they ask. Anything. I think, like, what I think you're studying and in what I'm studying. Exam? Maybe. No, yeah. no, like you can just ask like normal conversational yeah, like stuff. Casual conversation. Make probably. some conversation, Alina. Okay, was hat dir heute am besten gefallen in Hamburg? Uh, besten, also Hamburg, ich finde ich eigentlich Hamburg eigentlich besser als Berlin mm -hmm. und Hamburg ist sehr toll. Ich, uh, leider heute, also das Wetter war leider scheiße, aber ja. Yeah. Das hat sehr geregnet, <lacht> ja, auf jeden Fall. Aber dann, dann, aber so. dann waren wir auf einem Stand, wir haben uns ein Bier geholt. Ich weiß nicht, ob, ob ich das sagen darf, aber... Oh, das ist alkoholfreies <lacht> Bier, ja. ja. <lacht> Achtung. Ja, ja, genau. FYI, Alkohol ist freies Bier. Ja. Genau, also, uh, so, uh, talking in German shouldn't be an issue once you have, you are done with student colleague or like, once you have to take admission there anyways, because you need B2 at least, right? You yeah. need B2 or something. Yeah, exactly. It depends on the university, like for the Aufnahme, uh, some universities you can apply with the B1, but then there are also some universities be, uh, which need B2 for just for the application. So I guess by the end of the like your student colleague course, you'll be able to like converse properly in German and you would even be able to read the novels and understand the films as well. Mm -hmm. And Nitesh Gupta is asking, does Degendorf has summer intake? Oh yes, Degendorf has summer and winter intake as well. And Degendorf, I guess like this is the prime example for diploma students because three friends of mine just got admitted to the Degendorf for this winter semester and they'll be starting, I guess, like from the next week. And they did their diploma and they started with, they applied directly to the Degendorf and they got the admission in the English program. Ah, uh, that's really interesting. Now, computer science course in German or English, how does it affect? 
uh, computer science in general doesn't like it doesn't affect much whether you take the journal like the German or the English course because the, the programming which you are gonna use is so is obviously gonna be in English so the only thing you'll be hearing in German would be some of your other subjects or either like theory subjects or maybe some other instructions in computer but as far as the programming goes it would be the same as in German and in English mm -hmm. Mir tun ke guten Abend, ich bin 16 Jahre alt, muss ich die Test darf absolvieren oder ist Kräuter Zertifikat B2 genug für die für den Deutschkurs für Informatik? Now here he's asking that he's wishing us like good good evening and then saying like does he need like test of certificate or the Goethe B2 certificate is enough for the German informatic thing? But so if you I guess you're 16 so you're obviously aiming for the bachelor's right now. So I would say like B2 would be more than enough, but still I would say like if you do the C1, then you you know how the college, like the, the German structure is and you can converse better. And when you're learning the language, the, the medium of instruction in the language course is kind of like, it's it's really slow. The teachers tend to speak really slowly so the students can get the language. Mm. But as, as soon as you're in the university, the professor are already uh, like really proficient in the language and they expect the students to be the same. So they speak really fast and you have to catch up with them. So I would say like C1 is the must for bachelors or masters. Uh, I think Mehul is also trying to ask like what exact, um, I think level should he attain to apply? I think with Goethe certificate yeah. beats why you can apply to most of the universities. Mm -hmm. But I think like, do you guys need to give test off to or like, is there uh, something different? Oh, it's the, just the optional thing. Okay. Either you do the test off or you do the DSH with like four grades in each of the columns, or you do the TELC C1 Hochschule mm -hmm. or the Goethe certificate C1. So there are like four options. You have to take any one of those. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's interesting because I was wondering because there's also this test called test AS. I don't know what it is about. I guess it's an online test. Uh, I'm not quite sure about it, but uh, yeah, it's an online test. I've heard just from my friend, like he's like, he gave, he wrote this examination online and he passed it, but I don't think like many of the institutes or universities recognize it as a valid German certificate. Mm, mm, could be. Uh, all right, now we have, how much time does it take to learn C1 level? Darshan Lal is asking. Uh, for me, it took me like almost an year. I would say more than that because just to master the language, it's not like so much easy as, as easy as you think. A1 and A2 might be the easiest language level, like the levels of language. But then as soon as you start with the B1, you really uh, like get to know how the language works and the grammatic structure. And then you have to like, it gets really intensive from there. So till C1, I would say give or take an year, at least an year. Yeah, it's like it's definitely true, and like it, it all it also depends on like how much time you're investing in. Science. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're like doing it extremely intensively, I know this language institute called like Language Pantheon in uh, New Delhi. They teach students from like complete zero till B2 in like four and a half months or five months. And like they claim that they have taught those students German after like they have cleared the Goethe certificate. But again, their structure is completely different. They teach you German like they would teach you in some coaching institute. Oh, like know? the IIT coaching. Exactly. So like okay. they're they are like really, really intensive with that. But in Germany, they really take care that, you know, you are actually having fun or like you're also trying to inculcate everything you see an object and you can directly relate that object to the German word and like just you know um, yeah your language learning is more cohesive that way yeah the That's... main thing is to surround yourself with the language I mean like I know all of you might have like watched all the English series and as well like the Big Bang Theory or the How I Met Your Mother just watch them again in German language and just with the English subtitles so you know how the things are said and how the accent is so you'll just get to know German more better Akansha Gautam is asking, how is Ha'ave Hamburg for English taught program? <laughs> <laughs> Alina just okay. laughed right now because, well, the thing is, everybody knows in Germany the Ha'ave or like the Fakok Schule most of the times, they don't have really good reputation. Um, even in TUHH, they have this phrase called Ha'avela Kyonen Nichts. So it's like they don't know anything yeah. or like they are dumb. <laughs> now, so, Again, it's like the perceived quality of something. So maybe Huawei isn't bad, 
but the people think it's bad so like it just somehow becomes bad you know but um i think for the perfect answer you should definitely write to the professors or write to the students who are studying there and they will give you a better idea about this one anuj radha krishna is asking came to bhaiyo are maja ma maja ma maja ma kayo all right um uh, um uh, mohit mystery okay mithun ke we feel side musish for bringing to a vorbereitung des aufnahmeprüfungs der aufnahmeprüfung ich glaube vier oder drei monate drei oder vier monaten sind reich ja ja brauchst du nicht mehr als drei monaten also alle sind gleich was du schon schon gestudiert äh, also studiert haben und ja du musst nur wiederholung ja das ist alles ja ich glaube das ist auch immer unterschiedlich von person zu person ja stimmt ähm, okay dann dann haben wir abimanyu agarwal is asking is it worth studying bachelor in finland or indian mm. I, i don't know if i can say anything there you may yeah. like have you had like did you talk to somebody who has some idea about this uh, or like you heard something about it i guess like finland is kind of like the backup option for the guys who don't get like visa for the germany so it's still as a backup backup option and you know like you have to already like pay the fees in some of the university and i don't think like the quality of education in finland is as good as it is in germany so obviously ge- ge- like germany is the better option mm-hmm. uh cat is the <laughs> cat is right the well juman dikhayo bhai are pehle dikhayo ha jumi juman ji theek hai Uh, all right so uh, siba siba sish mukherjee is asking is university of leipzig good university of leipzig uh, yeah the university is pretty good like it's same with the rth aachen and the leipzig university and the hanover these all universities are top class top notch the only problem the students have there is with the job so if you if your parents are sponsoring you and you don't have a problem like managing the money from or transferring the, having the money transferred from india then i would say those are the top notch universities and the atmosphere and the living conditions over there are also pretty good but if you are looking for a job then i would say you should like aim for a better city or the, like more dense city like munich or berlin or hamburg mm-hmm. for example now ishan is also uh, yusuf ranja is asking is student colleague easy to pass Uh yes I would say student colleague is uh, easy to pass now it depends from person to person I mean like is there is nothing as easy and hard unless and until you work for it so obviously if you work for it and if you're like fully dedicated to it then obviously you can do it because I just finished my student colleague and I didn't like it's okay I'm mean, like the subjects are easy to understand because all the things you have just studied are uh, you're just making a revision kind of thing the only difference is you are doing it in german So yeah if your german is good and if you understand everything then i guess it's the it's really easy to pass mm i think it's getting over exposed i'll just mm-hmm. close the window you can go to the next questions okay yeah the window it's like so much light the curtain is in so, there so so hardcore gamer is asking hi which branch should i choose for mechanical engineering that's also a branch and like mechanical engineering is a mm. branch in itself no but what exactly was you asking which branch should he choose yeah for mechanical engineering I'm like so this. maybe he's talking about like this uh, automotive and like uh, robotics and all ah, of okay. that okay if you're talking about the sub branch i would say hey, do the bachelor's in mechanical because that acts as a base and then for masters you can go for anything because after you did your bachelor's in mechanical that opens a door for many of the other things so yeah you can do whichever interests you the most mm uh adit sharma how long can i stay if i get visa to write aufnahme prüfung and if i fail in aufnahme prüfung but join private language institute or if i join private student college will my visa get extended so yeah obviously i think uh, sorry to break you in no, the middle okay. but i think this is like a really interesting question and like yeah. i think you can go in complete detail with this one yeah exactly so like how long can you get visa to write aufnahme prüfung so like maybe you can start uh from exactly like when you apply to student colleagues in india mm-hmm. na and then if a student colleague accepts you then afterwards they invite you to write the aufnahme prüfung yes. i think like you can start telling the story from that phase uh, okay so here the first part of the question is how long can i stay if a, if i get a visa to write a aufnahme prüfung 
So basically, if you're just coming to write the exam, just to write the exam, nothing to do else, then your visa would be for three months, not more than that. You just have to write the exam and just head back to your home country. And is it like, is it going to be the student, uh, is it study applicant visa? Yeah, it, it would be study applicant. It would be related to the university, just applying to the university kind of visa. It okay. would be mentioned in your visa, like the purpose of your visit and everything mm -hmm. that would be mentioned there. Okay. And if he fails in Aufnahme Prüfung, but join a private language school uh, or institute, or if join the private student colleague, my visa is extended. So if you're just coming for Aufnahme Prüfung, I don't think then visa would be extended. Then you have to just go back to your home country and apply it again with the new documents, with your confirmed admission documents. So if you're planning for a private language school or anything, I would say you just apply from the from the beginning. Just don't apply to the student colleague and then to the private. Then you have to do the whole process uh, process again. So I would say you do your language, maybe your uh, two language, maybe just two levels, B1, B2, and then apply to the Aufnahme Prüfung. So then you have just four months for your language and then for the Aufnahme Prüfung, then you will have like eight to 10 months of visa with you. And you can extend your visa here if you are coming with the uh, confirmed admission from a language institute or a private student colleague. But like, is it also possible to like come here with the visa to write Aufnahme Prüfung and like get it extended afterwards? No. I don't think like if because one of my friend tried to do so and he failed like he failed with that thing he said like the auslander behörde that's the immigration office declined their offer said that you have to go back to your home country then reapply for the visa with your confirmed admission and everything mm -hmm. and then we can send you back or you can just come back after that okay okay so like this thing where you can extend your visa only happens when you have a conditional admit from the university exactly if you unless and until you have an <clears throat> you don't have any like admission confirm confirm admission from a university uh, your chances of your visa extension is almost to zero okay so like without number proofing you have to go back anywhere yeah exactly you have to go back okay but then again for like uh, when we are applying for off number proofing uh, just for that then we have to show the 8640 euros again no 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 i don't think like uh, for for just for the three months you don't have to show any 8640 this block account you just have to show enough i i uh, some bank statements from your father uh, from father's account and some like just this, just the financial background and the financial proof just to show that you can stay there for three months and that would be enough and mm -hmm. your living facilities obviously and i think also like you know the main details you can always just ask the embassy because they are just there to like respond to you in detail about what kind of documents you need yeah. because we also don't want to tell you something that might be something different so like it's also really a better practice that you just always confirm the things with the embassy yeah they change the rules like every semester so i would i would say you just confirm with them mm. for a better information um now ishan is asking bachelors in poland mm. <clears throat> so i don't know much about poland though but like i know just one of my friend who started student colleague in germany and then he was like fed up with the student colleague. He didn't want it to take it anymore. So then he went back to like India and applied for Poland visa. And then he started studying in Poland. And then he again went back to India because he didn't find Poland really good. So I, I'm here. I'm no one here to judge him or anything about Poland, but I'm not like sure how the Poland is. Mm. So we have, uh, what other question can we take? There was this one, this this dude is getting really angry, Shivam Gandhi. So how should I prepare for M pharmacy there? Is that too expensive? And what about its scope over there? So like neither am I an expert in pharmacy and I don't think like Mehul is either. So I don't think we can like tell you about it that much. But um, yeah, like, pharma, like we are engineering guys. So like if you have an engineering question, like Technical it would be, yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be like, um, Happier to answer that. Shebaz is asking, what is the easiest MS field in MS in mechanical engineering? Master's field, I mean, like, if you see it that way, each and every field after, like, for the master's is difficult, yeah. and each and every field is easy at yeah. the same time, because it depends on your interest and how much work you put in, in put into it. So yeah, if you're working for it, I guess each and every field is easier for you if you're really interested towards it. And if not, then I guess <laughs> it's just it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, easy is a wrong question to ask, really, Shabazz, because most of the times if you're doing your master's, man, it is not going to be easy. At the time when you're writing your master thesis, and if you don't have an idea in your head about what you can write, 
because the German authorities or like the German uh, professors and tutors, they're just going to leave you alone and they're just going to let you know that, hey, this is going to be the master thesis. You need to come up with an idea about which you want to write your master thesis. And if you can come up with an idea because you're not interested in that subject, you will find it extremely hard to like complete your masters. Yeah. So I think it's like better to just like go through the different options <clears throat> you have and see which one you would like because like easy is definitely not the way to go. Guys, yeah. can you hear the audio and everything properly? Can you just like leave a like so that we know that everything is working perfectly fine? All right, Rohan Khandekar. Everything is worth doing in Germany, Sibashish. Uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I mean, like, I would never, <laughs> I would never go back to India. Like, uh, when I see the kind of opportunities I have here, like, yeah. absolutely, like, I have no desire. <laughs> Same with me. I mean, like, I'm here for bachelor's and I'm staying like for forever, I guess. Yeah, like as long as nobody throws us out. <laughs> <laughs> We are, we are like absolutely happy to be here. Um, Sh Shivansh yeah. Singhal is asking, like, I mean, we love to help you guys, you know, like we are here, but like, that's exactly what we are doing right now. We are like sitting down to like respond whatever questions we can so that you can also like make your way to Germany because to be honest, it is by far a country which has like really less competition right now. And it is like still like an underdog. Not many people know about mm -hmm. it as a immigrant country. And there are a lot of opportunities, like definitely, you know, whatever we can uh, do to help you guys, that's that's what we are doing right now. Um, Tapish Bajpay is asking, IITJ cleared extra year to study language. Uh, okay. Yes. Acceptable for admission to public universities. Yes, yes. Uh, that's a must. I mean, like, if you are here for bachelor's, if you are here for master's, then you can go for either English or like German. That's up to you. But if you're here for bachelor's, I would recommend it strongly to go for bachelor's program because, see, if you're planning to work in Germany, like in future or, or anywhere else, I would say if adding an extra language proficiency to your CV or just to your knowledge, it's always better. Like it's just like the icing on the cake, you know, because whenever you're applying for a job, if you have an extra language knowledge that the prepared, the employer would always appreciate it. So I would guess, yeah, if you're going for German medium, I'm like, obviously you'll be needing it. And if not, then you don't need an entire year to study. You just need like a couple of months just to get to know the language and get the conversation start going. That's the only language. I mean, like that's the only amount of language you'll be needing. Otherwise, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shivansh Singhal is asking, Bharat bro, you told that University of Hamburg is conducting Aufnahme test in India. I think it was Student College Hamburg, which mm -hmm. does it like in yes. that to like when they have more than five yeah, uh, exactly. applicants, applicants from the same city or yeah. country. And so can you tell any other student colleague which does so? Do you know? No, I guess the Hamburg is the only one which does that. Uh, <laughs> Cast city wise. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, OK, so we have also Jay Gunger is asking, can you explain the exam pattern? So uh, just to be sure here, mm -hmm. till now I've understood like you come here for the off number Yes. Then afterwards, then you wait till the university evaluates that, and mm -hmm. yeah, they tell you like if you're accepted or not. Yes. And then afterwards, you start studying in the student college. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, what are the end exams in student in student college? So, like what kind of exams? Do at you the have end of the student college, uh, or in the middle of the after year, like the student college course is for like an entire year. So you spend like one year studying the student college. After four or five months, you will have a Swiss and uh, That's like the, the midterm examinations. So and then you'll have at the end of the student college, you will have the Festelungsprüfung or the FSP, it's known as. So that is like the final examination conducted by the university or the government. Or oh, so because that certificate which you get after passing the FSP would be would be like the golden certificate for you that will act as your gateway to the German universities. So yeah, that's the main certificate you'll be needing that after this student colleague and you'll get it. Dhruv Bansal is asking, please tell if pilot training is free in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, Dude, it's not, not it's free expensive. anywhere in the world. <laughs> it's like extremely expensive. Yeah, like it's, I don't think it would be free anywhere. <laughs> no, True. it's yeah. not free because I'm mean, like the fuel would be so expensive. It's yeah, I mean like, yeah. and the organizations are oh, definitely yes. not going to put it from their own pockets. Like no. 
the only reason the education in Germany is free is because everything is getting subsidized from the German taxpayers' money. Now, and like they want to market Germany as a place where students can come and study for free. Yep. But they don't have to do the same for like pilot training and stuff, you know? <laughs> so like, of course, like it is expensive. It is definitely expensive. Jagunger is asking, can we give the FSP without attending the student college? Okay, so this is the case when you're attending the student colleague by uh, like in a private institute or you're doing it by yourself i mean, like by doing it yourself i don't think anyone can do it and you shouldn't try it because you don't you will just end up wasting an year just by studying at home doing nothing because this is not a joke i mean like student colleague is a serious course if you go into the university you'll be studying in german and then you'll have all the terms in german so that would be really difficult for you to understand if you haven't done the student colleague. So student colleague acts as a base for you. So if you are not, if you haven't done the student colleague, then I don't think you will like able to survive the university in German. Like that won't be possible for you. I mean, um, as a rule, you can write the FSP without attending student colleagues. Yes. The universities tell you that you can apply as with the external can as an external candidate, but the chances that you're going to clear it without attending the student colleague, without knowing the German culture, without knowing the German books or like the syllabus that yeah. you get taught in student colleague is going to be extremely difficult. Yes. No. Um, Deria Hitesh is asking, do I need a right IELTS for yeah. scholarship AMD? What? Yeah. For uh, yeah. AMD, do... see, I'm applying through MOI. I don't know three okay. in that, so I'm not sure what that is. Come on, like you, you're asking a question, at least like form the sentence properly. Um, Utkarsh, I have done BA in psychology now and I want to do BBA in Germany. Can I? Yes. Why not? I mean, like, I don't see any problem there. You can just apply through Uni Assist or you just go to the DAD website and just uh, look for the courses you need. So I think for BBA, they are going to take the W course, right? Yes, Good for stuff. the W course, yeah. yeah. But if he has done like the BA in psychology for more than three years, like after 10th standard or like it's been 13 years of schooling, then I don't think they would be needing even the student colleague mm -hmm. for the BBA. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but again, it will depend like how the German consulates or missions are going to yes. process it. Yeah. Because most of the times I've seen these days that German consulates have started giving uh, rejections for people who want to do the same degree second time in Germany. So, for example, mm -hmm. if somebody has done a B, yes. uh, like some bachelor's in, Ger in in India, and afterwards they want to do a bachelor's in Germany, they are getting a rejection. Like I haven't seen for bachelor's, for but for masters, I've already seen like three or four cases where they have already done their masters in India. Now they want to do a masters in Germany, and like they are getting rejections. Yes. Um, so Deji George is asking, is Aufnahme Prüfung of TUHH also applicable in other student colleagues? So Aufnahme Prüfung means the entrance test and like entrance test is just conducted by one university for that university only. So if you want to apply like in other university, you have to go like apply to them and write the Aufnahme Prüfung or the entrance test for that university. So it's like each university or each student colleague have their own Aufnahme Prüfung. Okay. Yeah, it's not okay. applicable. Yeah, because again, like TUHH doesn't conduct the Aufnahme Prüfung. The Aufnahme Prüfung is conducted by the Student College Hamburg, Hamburg for yeah. TUHH, HAW, and University of Hamburg yep. for these three universities. So if you want to, um, yeah, apply to some other student colleague, then you have to write the Aufnahme Prüfung for that specific student colleague. So for example, if you want to do it for Berlin, you have to write the Aufnahme Prüfung for student colleague Berlin and so on. If there is okay, are there any mainframe jobs in Germany? No idea. Um, okay, what is the minimum score in IELTS required to take admission in MS in private and public university? There is no I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's six point five is the, is the standard. Band, yeah. yeah, that's that's the score that you definitely need to apply anywhere. Mm -hmm. Sandeep Thakur Bharat sir, I want info about iubh university and what kind of university it is so iubh uh it's it's like the the iubh is like the joke i guess <laughs> because it's the second person who is saying uh, I, i'm like you shouldn't trust iubh at all i mean like i know the infrastructure and the the fee structure is everything attractive but 
really like after doing an MBB or any of the courses from IUBH for your job chances is I don't think it's it's really open. I mean, like it's quite limited. Yeah, if you go out of uh, maybe Germany and just go back India, and then if you like applying for the jobs, then I guess you would have like a good chance of getting a job just because you did from Germany, not because you did from IUBH. But if you are going in Germany, like looking for a job after IUBH with the letterhead of IUBH, I don't think you will have much chances with that. That's true. And that's what I've also been saying, like the universities like IUBH and Gizma, nobody takes them seriously. SRH Heidelberg, SRH Berlin, these are still good universities. These are good, pri good private universities. But IUBH and this another one, Gizma, consultants offer you guys these universities only because they are paying a referral of around 300 euros per student that they are sending to that university. So that is the reason IUBH is even getting known by the students who are like not living in Germany because that doesn't have it on their portal. That also doesn't have the Gizma uh, courses and stuff. So like that's the main thing. And I wouldn't really like suggest you to go for IUBH and anything uh, similar to this. Mohit Mistry is asking how much time to get blue card after master. So like uh, blue card, you can get like actually for blue card, you can apply right after your masters. If you have a job which is paying you more than 52,000 euros, the limits just changed recently. So it is like somewhere around like 52,000 euros per year. And then you can apply directly for blue card for like permanent residency. Then you can also like apply after um, 21 months if you have even proficiency. Okay, so uh, Arpita Halder is asking work experience necessary for masters in data science. So we are taking this course for the this <laughs> session for bachelors only right now, but definitely we can talk about it sometime else. Um, Sandhya KS is asking how is the difficulty level of FSP? Is it easy? Um, FSP is like the Festelungsprüfung, so that's the exam you gave, give at the end of the your student colleague course. So if you know German really good and if you have like memorized or if you know the terms, I'm like what you have to do with the question, how to deal with the particular question, then I think you won't have any problem. I mean, like for the FSP, you have to prepare in the same way you prepared for your boards or for the IIT JWE or not even as intensive as IIT JWE, just prepare as you prepared for your boards examination in 12th standard and you'll have no time, like you won't have any hard time clearing it. Mm -hmm. Shivansh Tingal is asking, Mihul, is this your first year of bachelor's? Uh, yeah, actually, not the first year, I would say. It's the year zero. Is that the right word for student colleague? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, like, I just finished my student colleague uh, with a private institute. And I'll, I'm, I'll be writing my FSP probably in the month of uh, January. And yeah, so, and then I'll start my first year of bachelor's. So then I'll have, like, three years to study my bachelor's. So mm -hmm. I guess it's just four years. It's same as India. You just do one year of student colleague and then three years of bachelor. So in total, it's just four years. Uh, OK. So Pratik Rutre is asking, how is architecture in Germany for undergraduate? Uh, architecture in Germany, I would say it's uh, it's really difficult and really demanding because I had a friend who wanted to pursue like uh, pursue this architecture thing. Then that friend like went to another friend's house who was already doing the architecture and then like saw his books and the work he was doing. So he kind of got scared and like opted out of architecture and they started with just, just the mechanical. But I would say if you're ready to put in the work which is needed for the architecture too, because there would be lots of drawings and lots of programming and like everything to draw because now everything is digital. So you might have to work with the CAD and everything. So I guess it would be really difficult. But if you're ready to put in the work, then yes, uh, sure, go for it. Yeah, architecture is also like um, similar to in India. Like we have yeah. to spend like five years uh, in bachelors if you want to do ar architecture. And in mm -hmm. Germany, it's also the same. Like you yeah. have to spend like four years in bachelors rather than the normal three years that every other person will be spending. Yeah. And also like that's true. Like in architecture, you do require a lot of work. Uh, I've done my bachelor's in civil engineering and like right across <laughs> us were the people who were like uh, doing architecture. So like they would be awake till like three o'clock at night making their drawings and stuff. 
and we would be i think like we would be just chilling out or playing games or something and we would be just <laughs> laughing at the fate of the other people like who were just living across us and who were doing architecture so like architecture in general is extremely demanding and you will be ha you will have to submit like a lot of assignments a lot of different submissions presentations you will have to work with engineers sometimes for some uh, project about so all of these things will add up and if you aren't really like that interested in architecture it is going to be difficult but if you know that you will enjoy it or like if that's something you really absolutely love then i think there is no concern in that like you can just go forward with this some uh, someman maji is asking for student colleague do we have to apply directly to university via uniss or is there any other procedure for student colleague if you're applying to student colleague you just have to sort out the names of the student colleagues offered in every state because every state has one public student colleague and there might be other private student colleagues in the same state uh, state but yeah obviously the the application for student colleague goes through uni assist like everything pretty much everything goes through uni assist so uh, like student colleague is no exception so yeah if you want to apply just go through the uni assist and select the option for student colleague for a particular college okay um now anthony is asking how long will visa processing take for students who want to write the ofnam proof uh now it depends like if your exam is really nearby date like if you just got the admission i mean like confirm letter and your exam is like in the next month you can just schedule an appointment as soon as possible with the with the with your consulate or the embassy just call give them a call and ask them like uh, and request them for an urgent appointment because that thing is really possible and uh, because if your courses are starting in a nearby date then your visa could be processed in like 15 to 20 days just in case of emergency but if there is no hurry then i would say just uh, apply for your visa as soon as possible as early as possible you can mm -hmm. hazel kataria can a child having non medical in class 12th do bsc economics i had economics in class 12th having yes. non medical so like non medical the subjects are going to be maths chemistry and physics and yeah. she wants to do like um, economics bsc like bachelor's here in way course oh, okay so way course like in way course you'll be studying uh, obviously mathematics uh, there would be no physics and chemistry instead there would be something about history if i'm not wrong and then there would be some uh, also the english language because that's also an examination you have to give for way course and the gay course also so yeah you can do it prem if if you're not uh, if you don't have any problem with the subjects in the student colleague then yes it's possible okay so but like um it's completely fine like if somebody has a technical background actually of a t course mm -hmm. and he wants to do a way course like it's fine yeah it's fine unless and until you haven't started with your bachelor's if you are done with your bachelor's and then you want to go to masters then it can be a problem but in bachelor's it's okay because you already just completed your school so now it's the right time to choose your perfect field mm -hmm. so we have 18 more minutes now um Let's take some more questions. Vidash Mehra is asking, I have taken admission in a university in India. Now I'm planning to take admission in German university because I'm not getting interest in my university and I prefer Germany. Can you give me more suggestion? Uh, I hope you don't say the same thing after you come to Germany that like, okay, now I, I'm done with Germany. I don't have any interest in Germany and I'm going back to India because I hope that you don't do it. But anyways, uh, okay. So you already took the admission in India. Okay, so I would like suggest you to complete at least one year in that uni uh, like university, and then after you get the immatriculation for your second or the certificate for after your second semester, then with the help of the those grades, you can apply to the German universities in whichever you, way you want uh, through uni assist, obviously. Deepak Dubey is asking, "Bhai, which is better, FHWS or Rheinwall University of Applied Sciences for bachelors?" Rheinwall, just go for Rheinwall University of Applied Sciences for bachelors, like any day of the week. Like Rheinwall and the RWTH Aachen, I would say are the top colleges. If you ever get an admission from those colleges, never, 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 like just reject them. Just go for it. All right, so we have uh, Shaz Muhammad asking, is it better to join University of Applied Sciences or TU for more of a job-based study? 
Ah, uh, okay. So you're looking for a job. So I would go. Uh, I would ob obviously say you go for the applied science college uh, universities with applied sciences, because the course structure and the study program for for them is like more practical based and more like field work because you have more practical knowledge there. But if you are planning for PhD or any higher studies or mastering a particular subject, go for TU because TU have a really like high amount of credit points. So if you did your bachelor's in Fachhochschule and then you're trying to do your master's in TU, that's I don't think it would be possible because in Fachhochschule the credit points at the end of the semester or generally in total in general are really less as compared to the TU. But the job perspective, I guess it's uh, always more with the, with the Fachhochschule. That's the applied science. So go for applied science if you are looking for the job opportunities. Yeah, I mean even if it doesn't make a huge difference when you are um, applying for masters. Mm -hmm. um it's fine like most of the times like there is a difference definitely most of the times the bachelor's is supposed to be of 100 etc uh, ects so yeah. like one year is accounted for 60 ects three years becomes 180 80, ects yeah. um the major issue comes when you want to go for a phd oh, yes. so even like i i have seen people who have done their bachelor's in Fakokshule and now they are studying in the university but first of all getting in the university is very difficult because to use like prefer students from to use um that's the first thing and afterwards if you're once here inside and then you want to do a phd now yeah that is definitely going to be better that you already then study into you if you know that you might want to go to phd afterwards but if you are 100 percent sure that i just want to do my bachelor's or master's in just a fakokshula so that I can do a job afterwards then like really there's no need yeah there isn't to worry about that yeah um so i think um tune in games asked a really interesting question i forgot um well thanks vishrut pandey for your donation oh so okay. he asked a question i mean like yeah i think so he vishrut pandey but i can't see the question interesting all right so um Jay Gangar is asking, do all universities, uh, this is also a good and interesting question. This is meta. The, the condition of Euro is bad. It's sliding every day. How do you think it will impact the students? How much do you think it will slide further until 2019 winter? So <laughs> I don't think like we are the economics <laughs> expert or exactly. like we just uh, calculate the inflation and just uh, give you the rough number. Yeah. But I don't think it's getting better anytime soon uh, as far as like I know and I'm seeing the conditions. But yeah, the main impact would be on your blocked accounts because uh, the amount is 8,640 euros. And even just a, a difference of single rupees or maybe five rupees uh, or two rupees can make a, really a big difference in the total amount you're going to deposit it. So I guess that would be the major impact on students. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it would uh, like impact much because universities are free, so you're not paying any fees. Mm. Um, all right, so tell me about Bachelor of International Management. International Management, you again go for the way course and then that's your way. Mm -hmm. So go for the W course in Studium Colleague and then apply to the universities after you've passed the FSP. Mm -hmm. How much money is needed to do bachelors as is asked by Charan Kanisati? Okay, so the first and the most major investment you'll be needing, uh, needing is the blocked account. Obviously, that would be 8,640 euros straight forward to you. And then there would be your living expenses. If I would calculate like including the flight tickets, if you're coming here and the visa process and the examination fees, um, I would say it would be like around eight lakhs uh, if you if i say like in indian rupees eight to ten lakhs roughly between them like because you have to travel a lot first of all if you're not living in a major city then you have to travel to the major city for your consulate and then writing the writing the Goethe examinations and then applying for the universities via uni assist then you have to pay the fees in uni assist that's 75 euros or it's raised, I guess, 80 euros and 20 euros like consecutively. And then you have to book a flight ticket and then you're coming here. So then you're spending your blocked account. So I guess it would be around eight to 10 lakhs, not more than that. Mm. I mean, it's very, very less when you compare it to like Australia or oh, US yes, or definitely. Canada. Yeah. It's like really nothing. It's uh, almost the amount that you're going to spend in a private institute in India for yeah. bachelors. 
So uh, there's this university called Topper University in Haryana, and mm -hmm. like it is, it is just crazy how much money you have to invest there. For four year of bachelor course, you have to give tuition fee of purely fourteen lakh rupees. Yeah, it's same with the VIT. I guess like most of the guys you were familiar, like a Velour Institute of Technology. The fees was when I gave the examination for VIT. I know I wouldn't pass it, though I gave it. Like I wrote the examination, and the fee structure was like four point five lakhs per year, and that was ridiculous. I guess I mean like it's eighteen lakhs for your four years of bachelor's. I mean like that's and, and what do you get afterwards? What do you earn afterwards? Like nothing after my bachelor's of civil engineering. I was studying in a state government university now. So like a proper university and we were being offered a job for 15,000 rupees per month after our bachelor's in civil engineering. That's how bad the situation is. So to be honest, I don't see a future in India anyways. So anybody who is looking forward to coming to Germany, like just pack your bags, try, try as much as you can um, so that you can come here. Because to be honest, like India isn't really going to be um, very rewarding if you want to like do your bachelor's or something like that. And that is like one of the main concerns that I have for you guys. Yes. So just like look and try to come. Parminder is asking, tell me about IUBH, IUBH, IUBH. <laughs> <laughs> More jokes, huh? <laughs> Somebody wants to have fun. All right, so we had uh, we had another really interesting question. I just really missed it. I think it was Tunin Games, but oh, yeah, you mentioned it, Tunin Games. Okay, weird. Uh, what do uh, Germans think of what? What do you want to? Yeah, Adolf Hitler. Yeah. I'm mean, like the name is Adolf Hitler, and he's asking about himself. Uh, Mehul, <laughs> now you are going to be uh, on the German red list. <laughs> You took the name. You took the name that isn't supposed to be taken. So, what yeah. Germans think about Adolf Hitler? So, from what I know, of course, like everybody hates him. There is like a very small percentage of Germans, especially in East Germany, near in the Thuringia uh, state, Thuringen. So, they're like they they have these proper like neo Nazi fests and all that. I think like that's the only state where like Chemnitz, Dresden, Leipzig, all these cities are. Like that's the state which is like really screwed up in that sense, but otherwise, you know, if you go to the West Germany or North Germany, South Germany, it's like completely fine. Yeah, I mean, like in my opinion, I'm like if you if you like ask me what they think, to be honest, I would say they don't think anything about Hitler because they literally don't like now they according to this modern generation they don't even think or talk about those things. Just if you're in Germany, just take this out of, as a word, like never talk about Hitler or do the salute or anything. Just be the decent guy and talk about your culture, about your country, because that what matters at the end of the day. That's true. I mean, then you also have more stories to tell the other people. Yes, right? obviously. Now, and they are not going to like figure out yeah. if you're telling true or yeah. like false. You, know? <laughs> you can tell anything, I guess. You know, we have money growing on <laughs> trees in India. <laughs> You know, we have gold swimming in our rivers in India. Uh, you guys don't know that. We know that. All right. So, uh, uh, Bhaiji, BSA, K, Bari, MS, and okay. Bhai, Muhammad, Yusuf, Alam, please write the sentence properly. Uh, okay. So, do we have some bachelor questions? If you don't have any bachelor questions, we can just like stop the session then afterwards. Uh, part time, again, very interesting oh, question. Yes. Part time jobs during student colleague. Yes, uh, this is a really interesting question because this thing about the jobs depends really, really importantly, like majorly on the state of your student colleague. Now, I did my student colleague from Berlin, so I was allowed to work like a part time job. I was allowed to do like 20 hours in a week, not more than that. So, yes, like if you are in a state which allows uh, for the job, I would say those are like Stuttgart. I'm like southern state allows like most of the time and then the Berlin. And I'm not sure about Hamburg because I don't have any friends doing a student colleague here. But then in the Bonn, I mean, like in the north, uh, like NRW area, NRW states, I guess you're allowed to do work as well. So there are just some like just two or three states which doesn't allow you to work unless and until you're a proper university student. But as far as the other states goes, like you can obviously work like 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. for Hamburg, it's the same. Like in Hamburg, you can work too without any problems. Uh, I talked to Yash 
uh, okay. during that uh, student colleague video mm -hmm. and he was telling me that he was working in some place part time so like it's it's okay. also allowed in hamburg mm -hmm. um how much cost of private student colleague and can we do part time job with this course hemant madan is asking yes uh, okay some of my friends were also doing from the private student colleague even i did it for the private student colleague so yes i was allowed to work and how much does it cost uh, well that depends from student colleague to student colleague you just go to their website and look so the student colleague from which uh, from which i did was uh, known as the sid institute in berlin and it cost me around like 4900 euros just for the student colleague course and then the other 700 bucks if you are willing to study the c1 uh, german c1 and then there are some states which you can do the student colleague for 3000 euros but i don't trust their like quality that much because they don't give you any books or anything and they just just write on the board and you just have to wrote, write it down and there is no practical approach or anything to that so i would i would suggest like if you're going for paid university or paid student colleague just go for the better one or the best one which you find otherwise just stick to the public thing mm -hmm. so we already have some interesting questions here vidansh mehra is asking is it better to to get admission through an agent or uh, if a person doesn't know how to get admission in uh, bachelor's. I, I mean, like, if you're, uh, see, even agent is a human and human is a person. So I guess you are the same guy. I mean, like, you are also a person. I mean, like, even you can research as much as that agent can. So with the help of this channel, I mean, like, both in Germany, you can take up the courses, look up the courses, and there are some blogs and everything. Even I'm here to help you and everything. So the bachelor's process, can like seem like it seems like a complicated process but if you study it really good and if you just research it really good i'm mean, like it's not that complicated it's quite easy to get through with it just takes one step at a time just don't look just don't think about like the outcome approving and then the fsp and then the admission just think about how to get the admission first like how to get into the off number proofing and then start worry about the off number proofing as soon as it's clear then start worrying about your visa process and everything and when that's finished, then you have to worry about the FSP. So that's you have to take step by step. If you are st like thinking about everything like from the beginning, then you will be just confused and tangle yourself into this confusion. But if you're like doing it step by step, then I don't think you would have any problem. Um, Jay Gunger is asking, do we need a specific rank in advance, like under 10K or something to get admission there? No, unless and until you have passed the JWE advance and you can prove them that you have passed this examination, I don't think you would. the rank would matter that much. Mm. Yeah, there are a lot of places and I think the people who would be coming with a JE advanced certificate to Germany is going to be extremely less. Yes, so, um, mm. yeah. those are the chosen ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Anuj Radhakrishnan is asking, what about management internships for undergraduates in Germany? For management internships, um, so if you're just coming here to do the internships, that's also a good option after your bachelor's. But just if you're just coming for the internship, just look for the internship in a particular city you want. Like, for example, if you want to do the internship in Berlin or Hamburg, you just uh, type on the Google like the internship or the management internships in this city. Then you'll get your results and, and look for the requirements they are needing on their websites. That's the simple thing. And if you are doing your uh, internships after the bachelor's program in Germany, that's like way easier because if you're here, you already did your three years or two years of bachelor's and now you're familiar with the language and then you can just apply easily to the internships. Mm -hmm. uh, that's clear is saying visa time, student colleague admit here. Interesting, uh, really nice. Um, Ghazali Varsi is saying no visa appointments for conditional admits admit students in New Delhi. Oh, I, I didn't know about that. Is it? Yeah, I, I don't know about it either. I think like if there's something like that, we should definitely like, you know, just try to talk to the embassy. And if they took out this option completely, then of course, then you will have the traditional way of like going for off number proof and coming back applying again. Yes. Once you have the admit and like um, to the student colleague study in the student colleague for one year study your bachelor's and like do the job no nah? yeah so all right guys this was the this was a complete hour of studying studying bachelor's in germany mehul is still in hamburg for a few more hours so we are going to just chill out with him talk talk with him go around a bit and stuff like that 
Um, but if we couldn't answer some of your questions, well, I apologize for that. But you can write to us on Instagram. You can follow us. I'll put the link in the description of the video so that you can just come and like say hi or like if you have any kind of questions and stuff. But anyways, thanks a lot, Mehul, for joining welcome. us here. My pleasure to help now. you guys anytime. And um, again, I will tag him in the description too, too so that you can like uh, follow him on ins Instagram and you can follow me on Instagram. I can tell you as much as I can and the rest like Mehul can definitely handle. So uh, uh, yeah. yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day, have a great evening. And the rest of the questions we can take sometime else. All right, guys. Thank you for having us. All right. Bye-bye. So